Today I'm sharing an easy tutorial to show you how to make your own vintage inspired candy hat boxes. This one is an actual vintage one that I have. Um, they're just very simple and as the name suggests they used to have candy inside. You just need one of these little paper mache boxes with the lid that comes off available in almost any craft store. So again, with the vintage one that I have, I just wanted to show you how the box is off center of the brim. So you need to cut your brim quite a bit larger. Um, just I just kind of eyeballed it and I used a bowl and traced the shape on a piece of thicker cardboard because you don't want the brim to be easily bent. I am going to use vintage uh, wallpaper that I have to cover my little pieces with. You don't have to have vintage wallpaper. You could use wrapping paper or scrapbook paper. You're gonna trace the hat base that you cut from the scrap cardboard and the, the box lid and cut those out. And now you need to measure around the outside of the box lid with a tape measure. Um, this will determine the length of the wallpaper we need for that. Mine was about 13 inches, so I'm just taking my wallpaper and a ruler. The strip needs to be about a half an inch wider than your box top. So in my case, the length, the width of the ruler was perfect. So then just cut this strip out. And I'm just test fitting to make sure it's gonna fit. Just line up the bottom of the strip with the top of the box lid. And you can see that you have about a half of an inch of overhang, which is great. So now we'll move on to the side of the box and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna cut a piece of um, the paper that you're using and it needs to be about a half an inch wider than the box just like we did with the lid. And now I'm just checking with another ruler to make sure that my cut line is going to be even. It's, it's hard to tell when you're just eyeballing. And then you can cut your strips to the correct length. You want to leave plenty of overlap so that you don't have any blank um, cardboard showing. So about a half an inch of overlap should be plenty. And now all the pieces are cut out and so we will use Mod Podge to add the paper to the cardboard pieces. And roll out something to protect your work surface. I use this little Teflon mat, but um, wax paper or craft paper would work too. And then just put a little coat of Mod Podge on the side of the box lid. Um, not too thick, but not real thin either. And the key to no bubbles when you use Mod Podge is to coat both surfaces. So I'm just doing a little bit of the lid and a little bit of the paper to start. And then I just laid the lid down, um, matching up the edge, and just started rolling it. And then I just continued on adding the Mod Podge to the box and the paper until I had it all covered. And then I'm just going to use these little clamps to make sure that all the paper adheres nicely. If you don't have little clamps, you can use um, clothespins or maybe large paper clips. 
and then do the same thing to put the paper around the side of the box. And so now we can cover the hat brim. My cardboard had white on the back side uh, because the vintage box had a white bottom. So um, if you want yours to look like a vintage one, you can either use cardboard that has one side that's white or you could use um, white scrapbook paper on it or paint it or just leave it, you know, regular cardboard. It's not that big a deal. And remember to coat both surfaces with the Mod Podge so that you don't get any bubbles. Then you can use a scraper or a credit card, anything to smooth out any bubbles that may be there. And then just place a book on top and let it dry. And then while that's drying, we can move on to the top of the box lid. I'm just going to trim off any paper that's hanging over the edge of the box. So now we will fix the paper that's hanging over the edge of the box lid. Um, you just want to go along the edge and cut little snips all the way down to the box, probably about every inch or inch and a half, all the way around the lid. If you're not getting close enough with the scissors to the box, you can use a little um, X-Acto knife and just kind of slice down. And then again, use the Mod Podge and um, put some along the edge of the paper that's hanging down. And then you will fold each little tab that you cut over the edge and just kind of hold it there for a second. You can add some more Mod Podge if you need to, but um, in general Mod Podge dries pretty quickly so you should be able to just hold it for a few seconds and it should grab hold. So we'll fold those down all the way around the box lid. And then do the same thing with the bottom of the box, cutting the little tabs and then using the Mod Podge and folding the tabs over. And now you're just gonna go around the edges and trim off any excess paper. Get it as close to the edge of the box as you can. And now we can glue the um, little box to the hat brim. And here I'm just testing out where I want to put it. Remember, it needs to go more towards the back. And I'm trying to get it in a spot where the flowers on the wallpaper will still show. So once you have it where you want it, 
you can use some uh, white craft glue. I like Aileen's tacky glue and glue it down. Make sure that you have the seam of your paper to the back. And then you can place something heavy on it and just set it aside to dry. And now I'll show you how I added the flowers. This is another one that I already made and I just need to decorate the front. I'm just looking at the vintage one again to see how they um, put their flowers on. It's got a little bow and just a little sprig of flowers. So I'm going to look through my stash of vintage and some newer um, flowers to see which ones would go best with the wallpaper that I used on this hat. And I'm just using my glue gun to attach the flowers to the front of the hat. Make sure that the lid will still come off. Don't glue the lid down. 